Interested in some Sturdrum Studios and Paleophiles merchandise? Check out our links in the description below. Don't forget, if you have any questions regarding the species profile in this episode, feel free to contact the Sturdrum Studios official Facebook page to have a chance to get your questions featured in the Q&A portion of the episode. Thank you. Now, on with the episode. Initially, I believe to be a pack. Follow me as I am your tour guide through this adventure. So pounce on and pin down the prey. you have a very big interest in the Terrible Claw, which uh, otherwise known as Deinonychus. But we do have a few in the park, and uh, let's go ahead and head over to our enclosures for those. Now, before we do, let's have a word with Robert Muldoon and what he actually thinks about these animals. They should all be destroyed. <laughs> so, follow me as I am your tour guide through this adventure. Extracting species profile. Timmy, what is it? It's a velociraptor. Dinonychus! Terrible claw, otherwise known as Dinonychus. Dinonychus has only recently become famous due to its Hollywood cousin, Velociraptor. Velociraptors are well known for their role as vicious and cunning killers thanks to their portrayal in the 1990 novel Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton and its 1993 film adaptation directed by Steven Spielberg. The raptors portrayed in Jurassic Park were actually modeled after the closer related dromaeosaur Deinonychus. Paleontologists in both the novel and the film excavated a skeleton in Montana, far from the Central Asian range of Velociraptor, but characteristics of Deinonychus range. A character in Crichton's novel also states that Deinonychus is known now considered one of the Velociraptors, which suggests that Crichton used the controversial taxonomy proposed by Gregory S. Paul. Even though the raptors in the novel are at some point called the Mongoliensis, Crichton met with discoverer of Deinonychus John Ostrom several times at Yale University to dis discuss details of the animal's possible range of behavior and appearance. Crichton at one point apologetically told Ostrom that he had decided to use the name Velociraptor in place of Deinonychus because the former name was more dramatic. According to Ostrom, Crichton stated that the Velociraptor of the novel was based on Deinonychus in almost every detail, and that only the name was changed. The Jurassic Park filmmakers also requested all of Ostrom's published papers on Deinonychus during the production. They portrayed the animal with the size, proportions, and snout shape of Deinonychus, rather than Velociraptor. In the film Jurassic Park, the animals were spliced with different DNA to fill in the gene sequence caps, causing most animals, like the raptors, to not support feathers. But in reality, Velociraptors, like many other rat mana raptor in theropods, including Deinonychus or Terrible Claw, was covered in feathers. So Deinonychus, an amazing theropod dinosaur, uh, belonging to a group of dinosaurs called dromaeosaurs, was a larger cousin to the Velociraptor. Uh, these dinosaurs are probably some of the most iconic predators from ancient history. Their incredible sickle claw was likely not used like most people think, to cut or grab or climb. Uh, that killer sickle claw held aloft on the second toe 
was most likely used, like eagles and hawks, to pounce on and pin down prey. So it was more of an anchor than it was a killing tool. Uh, another thing, another interesting thing about Deinonychus is it actually had a tail designed for counterbalance. So if we think of it more as a bird of prey than an active uh, hunter like a lion actually using its claws to tear and cut, um, it makes sense to think that its tail would be a great counterbalance and that its feathered arms likely were flapped to help keep its balance when it pounced on prey to hold them down to eat them. Uh, these animals had hollow bones and this aided them in speed and agility. Uh, and like most theropods, Deinonychus, like a bird of prey, probably would have, would have gone after a medium-sized uh, medium quarry. So if we think about a three and a half meter long theropod with this incredible killing claw, uh, we would think of small uh, plant-eating dinosaurs like the bones that we have here of an animal called Tenontosaurus. These are some associated vertebrae, they look to be caudal vertebrae, from a Tenontosaur out of the Cloverleaf Formation in Montana. Now, if you can imagine a red-tailed hawk pouncing, uh, attacking a cottontail or a large jackrabbit, it would have been a similar scenario when Deinonychus found the appropriate size Tenontosaur straggling from the rest of the herd. CAT scan analysis shows that Deinonychus also was able to hear low frequency sounds and was able to even see in night vision due to its large orbital finistrae. An adult Deinonychus had the bite force of between 4,000 and 8,000 newtons, about the equivalent of an American alligator. It could literally crack through bone. Deinonychus body design suggests that when it came to speed and agility, this animal truly had the upper hand. Individual bones of Deinonychus are quite narrow and light. Deinonychus was likely a feathered theropod, as we're starting to learn through the fossil record and discoveries of many new well-preserved species, most of these theropod dinosaurs actually did have feathers in some form or fashion. Uh, this of course reignites the debate, were dinosaurs warm-blooded warm or were they cold-blooded? What I have here are two toes from an ornithomimid from Texas. Ornithomimid means bird mimic. And these were not toothed theropods, but were very similar in other skeletal features. These toes would have articulated like this, giving their feet high, mobili high mobility, so that when a Deinonychus or another ornithopod dinosaur had a burst of speed or needed to pounce on its prey, these toes would give like springs loaded. What I'm holding here is an interesting fossil that tells us a lot about theropods like Deinonychus. This is from a dromaeosaurid from the Aguja Formation of West Texas. Uh, this is a metatarsal, so this would be one of the long bones of the foot. These dinosaurs stood on very slender toes and supported their bird-like bodies. This fossil tells us a lot about the life of this animal because of this pathology, this swelling in the bone here. Uh, being active hunters that had to pounce on their prey to pin them down with their large sickle claws, the Deinonychus probably frequently injured its foot. John Ostrom's original reconstruction of Deinonychus, not only did it uh, spur the debate between warm and cold-blooded animals, but his observations on its, uh, its agility and its overall design uh, also spurred the debate uh, of whether or not birds were related to theropod dinosaurs. So Deinonychus was, was uh, originally discovered by Barnum Brown in the early 1930s, and but he never uh, he never actually described it. It was uh, first described by John Ostrom in the early 1960s, about 30 years later. Now both of them had found Deinonychus within the Cloverleaf Formation, which is up in Montana and Wyoming. Uh, it's early Cretaceous in age, about. Uh, 130 to about 99 million years old or so. Um, but Deinonychus is also found in 
the Cedar Mountain Formation of Utah and the Antler Sands Formation of Texas. Uh, all three of these formations were deposited within floodplains, so you generally get very good deposition of, uh, of bones, which means you get some articulation, some, some bones still in a lifelike state. Uh, now, there haven't been very many complete Deinonychus found so far, but there have been a few specimens, including a block of Deinonychus that uh, was initially uh, believed to be a pack. Uh, John Ostrom found them back in the 60s or 70s or so. So the Cloverly and the Antlers formations were deposited during, uh, in a floodplains environment, similar to what we see in Louisiana, swamp-like, subtropical. Uh, with very rapid deposition of sediment due to the immense amounts of, amount of flooding. Uh, this rapid deposition, deposition leads to a lot of your fossils being still articulated or in a lifelike position. Uh, it's not very uncommon at all to find articulated tenonosaurs. There's several up in the uh, Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana. Really, really nice specimens. They've also found uh, articulated Deinonychus feet, and a number of different uh, different uh, skeletons within the cloverleaf formation. The antlers formation is not as well studied. You get a lot of a uh, lot of dinosaurs in there when you hit the right deposits, but those right deposits are pretty much few and far between, and a lot of it is not really well hunted by academics, commercial, or hobbyists alike. The paleoecology of, of, during the time period that uh, Deinonychus lived in uh, can be well represented by the cloverleaf formation where you find the duck-billed dinosaur Tenonosaurus, these two tail vertebrae here from Montana. Uh, you can also find the armored dinosaur Sauropelta. Uh, there's a small uh, theropod, the microvenator, as well as several turtles and, and lizards that are known from that time. Uh, there has been some large fra fragmentary sauropod material, but you kind of have to wonder whether or not that material might have washed in from the underlying uh, Morrison formation since most sauropods went extinct during the Cretaceous. It's really exciting to think that we have comparative formations to the Cloverleaf here in Texas and Oklahoma in the Antlers Formation. This formation may contain the bones of the first Deinonychus from our state, as well as fossils from the giant super predator Acrocanthosaurus and Sauroposeidon, a large sauropod from the early Cretaceous period. Texas was dominated by these giant beasts, but hopefully we'll be able to find the remains of one of these small, terrifying theropods. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Paleophiles. If you liked the episode, we would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you're interested in keeping up to date with future content, consider subscribing to our channel and checking out the Stodrum Studios official Facebook page. The link can be found in the description below. Want to know how to support the channel and receive some awesome perks? Then check out our Stodrum Studios Patreon page and consider becoming a patron. This link is also provided in the link below.